Hi everyone, hope you're doing great. In this video, I'm gonna be starting a series where I walk through Harvard's free online computer science course, CS50. It's fantastic. If you haven't taken a look, definitely check it out. So I'm gonna be walking through the easiest and introductory lesson in CS50, which is all about Scratch. So let's get into it. Yeah, so from CS50's website, we see that just a welcoming on the welcome page. It's all about, hey, like welcome to CS50. This is gonna be a cool experience for anyone who's new to computer science or maybe has some familiarity but wants to learn some more about some of the basic concepts and even dive a little bit deeper into more of the technical fundamentals of computer science. So this is awesome. I like how they organize it. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yep. I'm still getting used to this pen, but I like it a lot. Anyways, I really like how they organize everything on the CS50 website. So we can go ahead and go to week zero, scratch. Yeah, so in case you're not familiar on each page of the CS50's website, it's going to be listing each of the assignments and materials for each week. So week zero is basically the introduction, all about some of the plan for the course and what the weekly assignments are gonna look like. So on each week you'll have a video and we can go ahead and go down to the problem set zero, which is gonna be what we're really looking at to, in today's video. Oh yeah, so one thing to note is that collaboration on problem sets is not permitted in general. So one thing that is worth keeping in mind for these videos is feel free to look at these videos as a guide for some of the ways to look at doing these problems, but definitely don't plan to just copy and paste what you see in these videos or other videos on YouTube. Okay, so yeah, let's head over to the specification. Awesome, so for this scratch assignment, Basically, the goal of the assignment is to create something that you find interesting, whether it's a interactive story, a game, really whatever appeals to you, animation, as long as it fulfills the following requirements. So one, it can't have, well, basically there have to be two sprites at least at least one of which isn't a cat. And the reason for that is because the base sprite in Scratch is the cat. So basically CS50 is like, hey, let's try to do something different. Your project must have at least three scripts total, but not necessarily three per sprite. Your project must use at least one conditional statement, at least one loop, and at least one variable. Your project must use at least one custom block you've made yourself and your project should be more complex than most that are demonstrated in the video, but it can be less complex than Oscar Time and Ivy's Hardest Game. And those are both great. So Oscar Time, David, uh, Dr. Professor Malin made it, Ivy's Hardest Game, one student made it previously, super good, complex, but great. So really, those are the requirements, and the rest of the text here is outlining some additional details for just some tips. And then down here, it lists how to submit the assignment. So let's go ahead and head over to Scratch. And I'll actually pull up the, what's it called? Oh. Okay, there we go. So this is the Scratch project I made. And before I even dive into how it works, I'm just gonna start it up and we'll, we'll check it out. So it's called Godzilla Takes a Stroll. So press space to start, press up arrow to jump. So I really like Godzilla. And I was like, oh, if we can create a game, why not just create like a Godzilla game? So it's cool because when I jump, I jump over the cars. And when I press space bar, I activate my atomic blast and blast the grapes into oblivion. So every time I jump over a car or destroy the grapes, I increase my score by one. 
and there are some bugs with the game. So, for example, what should have happened there is right when the car hit me, I should have gotten the game over, but you might have noticed that I actually was able to blast the atomic breath, and that restricted the cars from giving me a game over, but that's all good. So, looking at it a little bit, let's go ahead and dive into the mechanics of how it works. Uh, if I can find my pen. Okay, perfect. So, here are the different scripts for each of the sprites down here. So you might have noticed that there are four sprites in my Godzilla game. So we have Godzilla himself. We also have car number one and car number two, as well as the grapes. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. So let's start with Godzilla. What does Godzilla look like? So Godzilla has a few things going on here. So. Let me go ahead and go back real quick to the specifications. Let's just keep these in mind. So your project must have at least two sprites. So we have four, so that works. Your project must have at least three scripts total. Okay, cool. We'll see that we do have those three scripts. And then let's look at the conditional loop and variable right now. So we do have each of those. So here's one conditional, and then the conditional actually takes place within a forever loop. So let's check out what those look like. First off though, and I'm not gonna break up everything in the game, just like some details that are worth keeping in mind. So when the start flag is clicked, what happens is Godzilla is put over here. So like, I'll go ahead and press start. Yeah, so even though I moved Godzilla over here, when you press start, moves over there. Excellent. And then it'll switch Godzilla's costumes to a few different ones. So if I click on costumes, I'll notice that right now Godzilla's roaring, so he's doing this roaring costume. And then the base costume oop, is this one, just standing there chilling. And then there's two costumes that are involved in the atomic blast. So there's this one, which is charge up. And you can see it's really subtle, but here the spines are glowing a little bit. Here they're not. And then after this, it's this one, which is blast the atomic breath. And those end up getting implemented down here. So you might remember, oh, let me see, I might pull it up right. Yeah, you might remember that. There has to be at least one custom block you've made yourself via make a block. So here's one custom block I've made. So you can go down to my blocks, create a block. And this one is define blast atomic breath. And you can see that here, whenever a key, that whenever the space key is pressed, blast atomic breath happens. So it's going to call this custom block, and that's exactly what happened. So first, Godzilla's costume switched to the charged, and then half a second later, the atomic blast costume is going to be released, and then that's also going to play this sound. So these sounds I got from different Godzilla YouTube videos, and then extracted the sound and then put them here in scratch. So this is the atomic blast sound. Cool. And then this is the Godzilla theme song sound, which is used at the beginning of the game and throughout the game. Yeah. So that's cool. I like that you can add all the sounds. Yeah. Scratch is super fun because you can do a lot and make something really fun. Okay. So that's that's a good overview of Godzilla. Again, I'm not going to go through every single thing. I totally can answer any questions in the comments, but that's an overview of that. So looking at the car. So the cars start out over here in this like corner, but they're not visible. So you can see that when the flag is clicked. Oh, maybe I should zoom in. Yeah. When the flag is clicked, basically, 
it's going to hide the cars. And then when the backdrop switches to instructions, it'll immediately start this custom block, which is car driving behavior. So backdrops, their control over here. Oh yeah, we can see the car going. The backdrops are controlled over here and I have a few different ones. So this is the very start backdrop. This is the next one. So press space to start. Then this is basic city. The instructions pop up after the player presses start. And then if an obstacle runs into them, then it'll say game over. And then that's all controlled right here. So going back to the car, car driving behavior, and we can see that the cars actually have been continuing to drive here uh, along this path. And that's controlled over here with this custom block, as I mentioned. So first things first, it's going to go to 273 on the X, negative 163, which is this corner over here. And then it says show, wait six seconds, and then for in a forever loop, if the X position is less than negative 272, then change score by one. So score is a variable counter up here. And that's another point where you might remember that we needed at least, oh, let me clear this. We needed at least one variable so that is seen over here in the score counter. Now, then it's going to go to this position, wait a random number of seconds, and then glide a random number of seconds to, oh, let me clear these, this position right here. So basically what that means is that if the car ever gets past this point over here, then it's going to change the score because that means that Godzilla avoided the car, hypothetically, and then it'll head it back over here and then start gliding from here to this position over here. But if it's not over there, then it'll just do the uh, same thing, something like that. And you'll, you'll, as you see my scripts, you might even be able to see things that could be improved or redundancies. So if you spot anything like that, definitely make a note so that you can know how you can improve your own code. Okay, and this is car two. So car two, pretty much the same except that it's going to move faster so the glide time is reduced from car one so we can see car one is 1.5 to 3 seconds car two is 0.75 to 2 seconds so it's going to go a lot faster okay now we go to the grapes and you might be wondering why grapes grapes isn't a big godzilla foe or anything basically i didn't want this game to be like super not super, but I was going to say I didn't want this game to be like violent in the sense that Godzilla is like shooting down people in airplanes or something. So I figured grapes would be a good way to do the atomic blast while not like, you know, being too, too destructive. But anyways, what's happening is this another custom block is going to control the grape movement so that the grapes are basically going to glide from over here. Yep. And we see it going. Over here, every iteration in a forever loop, it's going to just move one pixel to the left until it touches Godzilla. So one thing I was going to say is that there's an inherent error here because technically you can get away with not using the atomic blast on the grapes. But that's just one of the issues that I'm not going to fix because one thing I liked about this scratch game I made is that I actually made it in one day. It took about five hours to get everything done. But I'm really happy with how it turned out, even though there are issues that if I wanted to make this an actual game, like license it with Toho, which owns Godzilla, I would need to like change those things. But I'm happy with it as is. 
So that grape issue is one of the issues. But yeah, that's this is controlling the grape destruction, that custom block right there. But that's pretty much it. It's take some time to conceptualize what you want the game to look like if you're doing a game or even if you're doing a video. Take some time to conceptualize what you want everything to look like, how you want the flow to go. But once you get started, it ends up being pretty fun because you can just adjust everything and just experiment with what looks good and then go from there. Let's see, anything else worth mentioning here? Yeah, one thing I'll add is that if you are gonna make custom sprites, sometimes they can take time to edit inside of Scratch. So like this car two is really just car one. Oh, but it has just a few little details added like speed, you know? So if you don't want to edit sprites in, what's it called, in Scratch, I would recommend using Photoshop if you are interested in paying for the Adobe like Creative Cloud. There's a pretty good student discount. Or if you want, you can totally use GIMP, which is a free version that works really well. Okay, let me go ahead and pull up the requirements again. So let's see, one conditional, yes, we saw that. One loop, one variable, good, three scripts. So we saw different scripts, we definitely have three. Custom blocks, yep. So complexity, this is subjective, but I was really happy with the complexity of my project given um, everything that went into it. So I'm happy with that. So it meets all the requirements. And if we turn down here to how to submit, basically you just wanna submit the form and then you want to log in with your GitHub account and then get everything going in that way. So I, I wasn't gonna walk through that. If you would like me to, just let me know on the comments. There's also other videos by other people who can walk through that pretty easily. And then once your submission uploads, you'll be able to see what it looks like in the grading. So I'll actually pull up how mine was graded just so I can show that. All right, so here's my grade book. So I can head over to Scratch. And we can see, actually, yeah, I'm not even fully done with CS50. I'm gonna finish it soon. Yeah, so we can head over to Scratch. And then in a second, it'll pull up exactly what it looks like for me. So I can go to check 50. And then it's telling me what my project, what requirements my project passed and maybe didn't pass. So we can see that I got eight out of eight. So it passed all the requirements. So A, the project exists and it's a valid scratch program. So yeah, I submitted it as Godzilla takes a scroll, a stroll dot SB3. The project contains at least two sprites. Project contains a non cat sprite. So I didn't use any cats, but you can use you know, one cat. I I recommend just doing something completely different, just for fun too, for creativity's sake. Okay, so the project contains at least three scripts. Yep, uses conditional, loop, variable, custom block. So yeah, I'm all set really with that. So thankfully everything worked great. And yeah, I'll, for fun, I'll just run through it one more time. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll be posting more videos about CS50 and really just a bunch of computer science and programming. Also, I'll be doing some math and physics videos and then I have a huge interest in philosophy. So yeah, I, I will see how often I post, but it'll be fun, so. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope this was helpful in some way. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and take care.